Geometry concept 8b. Um, in this concept, we're just going to go ahead and continue more proofs, but in this case, our uh, proofs are going to focus really on segments. So um, for most of these, we're either going to be providing statements or reasons, so kind of fill in the blank, um, but we might have to do a full proof here later on. So let's go ahead and look at the very first one here. So our given information is that segment, or sorry, the measure of segment AC is equal to the length AB plus AB. And we're trying to prove that the two lengths AB and BC are equal to each other. And so we notice these are all going to be on this same segment here in AC in our picture. So let's go ahead and just kind of look here for a sec. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down our given information first. That's given to us. And then line two, it says that AB plus BC equals AC. So if I go ahead and mark that in my picture here, there's AB and segment BC. If I look at those two segments, AB and BC, I notice that together they make up the entire segment here of AC. So since those two segments together equals the larger one, that is gonna be a great example of our segment addition postulate. And then if we look at our third line here, what we get is that AB plus AB equals AB plus BC. Well, I wanna direct your attention back to lines, lines one and two. We notice here we have two things equal to the same thing here. So we have that both AB plus AB from our given information and AB plus BC from our segment addition postulate are both equal to AC. And since they're both equal to AC, then that means those two must be equal to each other. And that is going to be by our transitive property. So we can go ahead and set AB plus AB equal to AB plus BC. It's kind of like we're taking lines one and two and setting them equal to each other since they're both equal to the same thing. Well, if we look at line four, we now get that AB equals BC. Well, we have to think back, how did we change from lines three to four? we look closely, we notice that one of the ABs is missing from both sides of the equation. Well, since these are just links, that means they're just numbers, and we can undo that addition by subtraction. So we, all we did here was we subtracted AB from both sides since they are measurements. And so that means since we sub can subtract AB from both sides, that's gonna be our subtraction property of equality, if you wanna add that. And that will give us our final uh, proof statement, which is what we're trying to want. We go ahead and go to our second proof here. And our given information here says that lines K and line L bisect each other at point M. And we're also given that segment BM is congruent to segment CM. And we're trying to prove that the measure or the length AB equals AM plus DM. So I went ahead and we have our first given statement there that BM is congruent to CM. Um, but we really need to focus on this word bisect. If we think back to bisect means to cut in two. So like think bicycle, so by two wheels, bisect means two equal parts. So we can use that to help us here later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark based on our information. We know that since those two lines bisect each other, that the segments AM and MB are gonna be congruent and then also the segment CM and DM have to be congruent since they're both being bisected. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that BM and CM are congruent in our picture as well. So there's a lot of things that are congruent in our picture based on our given information. So if we look at line two, line two says that CM is congruent to DM. Well, we just talked about that, how that is gonna be the definition of a bisector. Remember, bisect means to cut in two, so that's just going to be definition there. Line three says BM is congruent to DM. Well, we have to be a little bit careful here. If we notice in lines two and three, we get, or sorry, in lines one and two, we get that BM and DM are both congruent to CM, and so by the transitive property here, we are going to get those two segments congruent. We're going to use that transitive property a lot. From segment or from lines three to lines four, not really much changes. We just go from segment BM is congruent to DM to that the length BM is equal to DM. And this is important because we're going from the figures, the segments, to the measures. 
And by doing that, that allows us to use um, algebra since we now have these links instead of the actual figures. But we can get that by the definition of congruent segments. Because con to be congruent just means that the link or the segments have the equal links. If we look at line five, we are asked to give the statement this time, but the reason is given as the segment addition postulate. Well, we're trying to prove that AB is equal to AM plus DM. If we notice in our proof so far, we haven't mentioned AB at all. So this might be a good indicator that we need to maybe introduce that into our proof. Well, if we look at segment AB, we notice that AB is made up of the segments AM and BM. And so by the segment addition postulate, these two segments are going to equal AB. Well, then if we look from line five to line six, we get that AB is equal to AM plus DM. Well, if we think about it, using line four, we know that BM is equal to DM, so we can go ahead and just substitute that in for the BM in line five. And so by substitution, we are going to be able to prove our proof statement. In our last proof here, we are going to be actually doing the full proof. So we're going to be using all statements and all reasons. Um, I've given you guys here four lines, but you may be able to, you might need to add an extra line, might do it in fewer, it depends on your information. Um, so feel free to write in as you want, um, just here as a guide. Our given information here though is that B is the midpoint of AC and C is the midpoint of BD. Well, remember, midpoint means to that point is in directly in between uh, the two endpoints. So that's going to split that segment into two equal parts. So that means here that we know in our picture, we can go ahead and mark AB is congruent to BC, since B is the midpoint of the segment AC. And similarly, C is the midpoint of segment BD, so that's going to make segment BC and CD congruent. So let's formally write that out in our proof. We always need to start with our given information. So I'm going to put those on the same line. In this case, that B is the midpoint of AC. Well, I, I was going to try, but it doesn't quite fit. So we'll go ahead and do it on the second. C is the midpoint of BD. And those are both our given information. Feel free to put those on the same. But then we can go ahead and, like we marked in our picture, go ahead and say that AB is congruent, or sorry, is equal to BC and BC is equal to CD, and that's going to be by the definition of midpoint. And so you can put those on two separate lines, or you can do it on the same. It really doesn't matter as long as it's the same reason. And so now we have that AB is equal to BC, and BC is equal to CD. And so if we think back, well, once again, we have two things that are equal to the same thing. We have AB and CD both equal to BC. So that means here that AB is going to be equal to CD by that transitive property. And since this is what we are trying to prove, we have finished this proof. Again, please pause the video here or go back and review and look um, at these. Make sure and ask your teacher if you have any questions about any of these proofs.